check out all book people of the world. The final issue to Doomsday Clock has finally come out from DC Comics. This is the 12th issue, and after many delays, even though this is supposed to have ended about a year ago, it finally came out. I'm going to go through some major spoilers for this, so if you have not read it yet, I'm warning you now in advance. Doomsday Clock started out as being the end of the Rebirth Saga in DC Comics, which many people got really excited about, including myself, because there have been many questions as to what was going to be happening in the DC Universe with the whole idea of rebirth bringing in this new reinvigorated spark of hope with DC. There have been many delays with this comic book series and Jeff Johns, who did stay on as the writer for this, left DC Comics to do other projects with DC itself. And many people are believing that this comic book series may not even really take place in the DC Universe. But then again, it may be taking place in the sense that it's part of the metaverse as opposed to the multiverse, which I'll explain the differences. The metaverse is supposed to be somewhat like the core central story of the DC universe, where if anything affects this universe, it affects all of the alternate multiverses that are taking place. So it's like the metaverse can be altered, but at the same time, the core concepts of it can't be. It's really best if you try not to think too much about it, because if you do, it's just gonna really hurt your head. In the Doomsday Clock storyline, we find out that Dr. Manhattan affected the main DC universe by making it so that Alan Scott, the original Green Lantern, never got his lantern. And this prevented the Justice Society from ever forming. This also somehow affected the idea that the Legion of Superheroes also was never formed in the future. But more importantly, the fact that the Justice Society never existed, this meant that there had never been a previous set of superheroes for the current superheroes to look up to. And it affected the whole Flashpoint and New 52 universes, where now the new superheroes were the Justice League, and they're the ones who started to establish the Age of Superheroes. Dr. Manhattan and had a limited foresight into the future where he saw that he was going to have a confrontation with Superman and he thought he was going to meet his inevitable end by Superman punching him because he couldn't see anywhere past that. This whole series was setting up a big conspiracy where there was like a Superman project taking place that other countries were trying to create their own super beings and we get an epic battle taking place between individual country super beings and they're fighting against each other and Superman. We finally get to see the whole quote unquote punch that's going to be taking place between Superman to Dr. Manhattan, but we find out that it's not actually Superman punching him. He's actually saving Dr. Manhattan, although I don't think that Dr. Manhattan could have been hurt either way. Manhattan gets a whole revelation of what he did and how the hope that Superman inspires to this world affects everyone around him. Superman himself is somewhat like the central core of the DC Universe, and he is somewhat where the metaverse surrounds. Manhattan fixes his mistake with Alan Scott and pushing the Green Lantern back into his hands, and in essence, he rewrites history once again where now the Justice Society is formed. This is almost like a domino effect taking place in DC history where now Jonathan and Martha Kent are saved by a Superboy, their son, Clark Kent, who is now taking up the mantle of being Superboy at a younger age and saving their lives. So now in the current DC universe, they are part of the whole DC stuff that's happening rather than being dead. It's pretty cool because we get the inner monologue where we find out there's still a lot of history to come about. And some of the new past is being explained explain so that the reader is understanding about what happened. There's a bit of dialogue put in there where Superman is going to be fighting Thor himself and a green behemoth is going to be a part of everything. I'm pretty sure they're alluding to Thor and the Hulk from Marvel Comics, but I love the fact that they put that in there. And hey, fingers crossed, maybe we will get that actual crossover at some point down the line. The characters of Mime and Marinette, who are part of the Watchmen universe, seemingly are now part of the DC universe. We find out that their son, who they were trying trying to locate is taken by Dr. Manhattan and raised as his own child up to a certain point. The Watchmen themselves, it also seems as though they're back in their own universe and as if they never really left, so everything is at the status quo. Maybe, kinda, sorta, I think. And Manhattan gives his powers to the universe, but also to his son, which is the son of Mime and Marionette, who we find out whose name is Clark. I'm not sure how they're gonna explain how Alfred's alive, even though he's dead in the current Batman comics. All in all, this comic book series was incredible incredibly well done, and I wish it had been done a year ago. And despite the debate as to whether or not this is canon, or whether or not this is just going to be affecting DC Comics, or whether or not writers are just going to take elements from this and include it in current DC Comics coming out, that's left to be in the air. The Justice Society is returning back to DC Comics, and we already have the Legion. Although it appears to be a different Legion, but still it does exist. Time will tell at this point, because all we can do is wait to see future comics, and whether or not there are going to be other writers that are going to pay attention 
attention to this storyline. But I do have a lot of hope, and I did enjoy this series despite the delays. Okay, I'm gonna end this review at this point. I've been talking way too much. Let me know what you thought if you read this comic book. Leave comments down below and let me know. With that, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell so you know when I put up future videos. Also, check out my Patreon site, patreon.com slash gaycomicgeek. You become one of my patrons. You get to see some extra pictures, videos, and photo shoots that I only show patrons. Check it out. I'd really appreciate it. And with that, I'll join you guys in another video very soon. Peace, love, and I'm staying. I'll see you guys later. Thanks. I'm in love with a hero. Major shout out to my buddy Brandon. Brandon, also known as the Stage Daddy. Thank you so much for this shirt. Also, the pup hood and the harness. Those are really incredibly cool.